Welcome to MedCrime. Today we shall be looking at the anatomy and physiology of the nervous system. The nervous system is the master controlling and communicating system of the body. It comprises the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The nervous system has three main overlapping functions that are the sensory input, which helps the nervous system to gather information and to monitor the changes which occur inside and outside the body. The next function is integration. This is the processing and interpreting sensory input and deciding if an action is needed. Then lastly, the motor output. This is a response to the integrated information and this response activates muscles or glands. The central nervous system develops from the embryonic neurotube and this tube becomes the brain and the spinal cord. The opening of the neurotube becomes the ventricles and the four chambers within the brain are filled with cerebrospinal fluid. Uh, the normal human brain comprises of the cerebral hemispheres, diencephalon, cerebellum, and the brainstem. The cerebrum is divided into two hemispheres, the left cerebral hemisphere and the right cerebral hemisphere. These hemispheres are divided by what's known as the longitudinal fissure. The cerebrum basically includes more than half of the brain mass. The surface of the cerebrum is made of the ridges known as the gyri and the grooves or depressions known as the sulci. These deep groups of fissures of the cerebrum divide the cerebrum into what's known as lobes. And these surface lobes of the cerebrum include the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, occipital lobe, and the temporal lobe. The cerebral areas that are involved in special senses, for example, gustatory areas for test, visual areas, auditory area, and the olfactory areas. The cerebrum also has interpretation areas for speech recognition, language comprehension, and general interpretation area. Let's then move to the layers of the cerebrum. The cerebrum is made of two main areas, that's the gray matter and the white matter. The gray matter is the outer layer that is composed mainly of the neuron cell bodies. And the white matter, on the other hand, has fiber tracts inside the gray matter. For example, we have the corpus callosum, which connects the right and left hemispheres. One of the important parts of the brain is the basal nuclei or the basal ganglia. The basal ganglia or the basal nuclei is a group of subcortical structures which are found deep within the white matter of the brain and they form the part of extrapyramidal motor system working in tandem with pyramidal and limbic systems. The basal nuclei involves the caudate nucleus, the thalamus, the butamine and substantia nigra. Then we have the globus pallidus. This basal nuclei regulates voluntary motor activities by modifying the information which sent to the motor cortex. When this area has problems, one may not be able to control the muscles. All this control is spastic and jerky. This case is evident in diseases for example, Hutchinson's chorea and Parkinson's disease. The diencephalon. The diencephalon sits on top of the brainstem and is enclosed by the cerebral hemispheres. This diencephalon is made of three parts, the thalamus, the hypothalamus, and epithalamus. Let's then look at each of these parts of the diencephalon. 
The thalamus surrounds that ventricle and serves as a relay station for sensory impulses transferring impulses to the correct part of the brain cortex for localization and interpretation. Then the hypothalamus sits under the thalamus and is one of the important autonomic nervous system center which helps regulate the body temperatures, control water balance, regulate metabolism, and also it's a part of the limbic system which controls emotions. The pituitary gland is attached to this hypothalamus. Then lastly we have the epithalamus. The epithalamus forms the roof of the third ventricle and houses what's known as the pineal gland or the pineal body, which is an endocrine gland. Then this epithalamus includes the choroid plexus, which is responsible for cerebrospinal fluid formation. The next part of the brain is the brainstem. The brainstem attaches to the spinal cord and is formed of the three main parts, the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla oblongata. The midbrain is most commonly comprised of tracts of nerve fibers and acts as a reflex center for vision and hearing. Then the pons is the bulging center part of the brainstem. The pons is mostly composed of the fiber tracts and includes the nuclei that is involved in controlling breathing. The medulla oblongata is the lowest part of the brainstem, which marches into the spinal cord and includes important fiber tracts and contains important control centers. These control centers are responsible for heart rate control, blood pressure control, breathing, swallowing, and vomiting. Then we move to the next part of the brain, known as the cerebellum. The cerebellum also has two hemispheres with convoluted services and provides control or coordination of involuntary body movements. The cerebellum has anterior lobe and a posterior lobe and a floculonodular lobe. The nervous system has a protection mechanism against any external damage and this protection of the nervous system comprises of the scalp and the skin, the skull and the vertebral column, the meninges, cerebrospinal fluid, and the blood brain barrier. While looking at the meninges, they have the three main parts that the dura mater, arachnoid mater, and the pia mater. The dura mater is a double-layered external covering that covers the periosteum, which is attached to the surface of the skull, and has the meningorea, which is the outer covering of the brain. This dura mater falls inward in some several areas of the brain, for example, the vax cerebri, and the arachnoid mater is a middle layer that is web-like, and lastly we have the pia mater, of the power matter which is an internal layer that clings to the surface of the brain. The cerebrospinal fluid and the ventricles. The cerebrospinal fluid is formed by choroid plexus and has a similar composition as blood plasma. This forms the water recursion to protect the brain and it circulates in the arachnoid space, the ventricles and the central canal of the spinal cord. In this image on the left, we have the four ventricles of the brain, that's the lateral ventricles in the cerebral hemispheres, the third ventricle, the cerebral aqueduct and the fourth ventricle. Then on the right side, we have an image illustrating the flow of these cerebral spinal fluid in the arachnoid spaces around the brain surface, the ventricles and the central canal of the spinal cord. Let's then move and look at the spinal cord. 
The spinal cord normally extends from the medulla oblongata to the region of the T12, that's the thoracic vertebra number 12. Below the T12 level is the cord equina or a collection of the spinal nerves. Then after that, the enlargements occur in the cervical and lumbar regions. Looking at the structure of the spinal cord, we have an exterior white matter that has <laughs> conduction tracts, the internal gray matter, which mostly composed of the cell bodies, and this gray matter has a dorsal horn, which is a posterior horn, and anterior or ventral horn. Then in the central area, we have the central canal that is filled with cerebrospinal fluid, and the spinal cord is surrounded by the meninges which protect it. Then the spinal nerves live at the level of each vertebra. By looking at the structure of these nerves, the endoneurium surrounds each nerve fibers, and groups of fibers are bound into fascicles by what's known as the perineurium. Then these fascicles are bound together by an epineurium. These nerves can be classified based on their structure or functions. When classifying the nerves based on structures, we have a unipolar nerve, bipolar nerve, and a multipolar nerve. But when we classify them based on the function, we have afferent or sensory nerves which carry impulses towards the central nervous system and efferent or motor nerves which carry impulses away from the central nervous system and some of these nerves are known as mixed nerves which are both sensory and motor fibers. Then lastly we need to look at the spinal nerves. When well, look at the spinal nerves, there is a pair of spinal nerves at the level of each vertebra. And these pairs submit to 31 pairs of spinal nerves. 